you're, you know, obviously a technical founder leading a startup. What are, what's the most important tool tool that you guys use in the development process? Um, obviously besides Coatsy. Well, yes, obviously besides Coatsy, uh, cause we do use our own product, but, um, I think the most important, um, is really communication. Like, I know that that's kind of cliche, <laughs> um, but um, like the ability to create a safe space and communicate and be transparent with each other is in fact the best tool um, for us to move forward. And the reason why is because technologies will change. Our product might change. Um, our mission, our, our mission's not going to change, but our product's goals might change. And so until we can really allow for our humanity to come through that we feel safe enough to share that uh, this is a problem with each other and that we trust each other enough to be able to listen, reflect and solve that problem. Um, we have to be self-reflective enough to even know how to communicate. <laughs> like all of those things um, are going to be universal no matter what technology exists. Because we might all start doing things in VR <laughs> and we're still going to need to communicate. One of the things I think that co -found or founders um, that are non-technical struggle with is hiring that first technical hire or whatnot. Um, you obviously have the luxury of not being that way, but what advice would you give to those founders that aren't technical in terms of how to evaluate you know, key technical hires? So I think that one, communication is really important um, when you don't under, like when you don't understand the process. And so it's more so finding someone who can empathize with you, the founder, um, and make sure that to explain things properly, make sure to walk you through properly, because without that step, without them being able to empathize that running a company is really, really hard. <laughs> um, it's going to make your life harder um, at the end of the day. And you as the founder, kind of what matters, you have the vision. You, you're you responsible for all of the numbers. You're responsible for people's happiness in, on the team. Um, and so like having that communication path, if you're struggling, um, is also really, really important. Um, and then being able to, if you need advice, um, find, you know, friends who are engineers um, that can kind of assist you in asking, getting to know what are the right questions to ask. But I do think that what you can do if you have, you know, the time and space is start building or literally learning and having empathy for what an engineer goes through. Because then once you're starting to speak the same language, um, moving forward or towards the same direction is um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really helpful for both sides. Facebook is like famous for their like move fast and break things kind of kind of saying and like obviously in startup people like speed is really important. How do you balance speed versus quality, especially as a pre and like you've been in a lot of different experiences, right? So like you said, working for a fan company versus a startup, is there a difference in terms of that balance between speed and quality? And how do you think about that? Yeah, so I always uh, imagine um, speed and quality on kind of different ends of the spectrum. Um, and if you imagine it as a continuum. Um, and so I typically like to be around a three, depending on the feature, right? So I think it's also variable. You can dial that feature up and you can dial it down depending on like what the context is. So for our team, we have a user feedback channel because we all dog food our own products. And as the engineers are working uh, using our product, they'll just like drop something in that user feedback channel. And so something that's quick, that's like, oh, we need to change this small thing. I'm like, yeah, just go for it. Do it. You know it. You're using it. You get it. Go for it. Um, but for something like real-time collaborative editing, <laughs> we spent months thinking through and analyzing what the process was going to be. Um, and you know, going through an extra bug bash to make sure that the first release like wouldn't have any catastrophic bugs, even if we were going to release it to people in our closed beta already. Right. And so like that was a phased rollout process. Like, so it really, really depends on what the feature is. Uh, but 
move fast and break things doesn't work for everything at the moment because particularly developers, they have really high expectations. Uh, and if you don't meet them, you're done, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, your product is built for, I assume, enterprise, but also a small bit. Like you're, you're better finding that balance. Like how do you think about prioritizing feature requests for from, you know, big companies versus small companies? Like what's, you know, like the... The challenge with big companies is they could just like totally take over your roadmap. So how do you think about that? Um, so I've always kind of thought about a, a roadmap as a as a, a whole bucket. Um, so 30% of the features um, can go to those enterprise deals that you need to just land. And a 30% goes to kind of future things. 30% kind of goes to um, like uh in infrastructure just getting things set up and going and development and all of those things and then um you know you uh bugs etc then you've got this last 10 percent for the shiznit that just comes up <laughs> and so kind of building that into the roadmap and kind of balancing that and not um if you have those mental buckets so your mental buckets might be different than mine um maybe you have like the enterprise versus like an individual flow, um, for example. Um, but kind of thinking about it in that way and sticking to that, trying to stick to that ratio. Um, and if you don't, um, making the decision consciously to move, like to change the levers um, has always been the way that I've managed. 